Uh, hi friends, a very good morning. In the last set of videos, we saw the different steps that are required for training a image classification pipeline using PyTorch and we also saw how to make your first submission to Kaggle. I believe and I hope that most of you have made your first submission and I heard from a lot of you that you have made your first submission and you are looking at how to improve your solution, right? Uh, as discussed, though it looks like an easy problem at a very high level, it is actually difficult due to the way the images look, nature of the images, how similar they are, and due to high imbalance uh, nature, the number of malignant and number of benign, the ratio is too different, right? 1.8% of the total training data set is malignant, right? So we will look at uh, a particular way of solving this particular problem using something called samplers in PyTorch, okay? Before we look at this problem, let's look at what each batch of the data contains, how much malignant images contains, and how it could impact our training cycle, right? So to demonstrate that, what did I do is, I picked up the train data loader, and I'm fetching a batch of uh, X's and Y's, X batch and Y batch, and I'm saying YB.sum, so why, we know that malignant is one when you do a sum you will get you will get to know how many malignant images are there in that particular batch okay and the batch size i've chosen here is 64 images that is each batch will contain 64 images and this is exactly the code that we uh, built in the last couple of videos right so what happens is i broke this for loop the end of 20 epochs because i don't want to run it for the complete set of epochs as you can see here some of the batches or I would say most of the batches contains zero malignant images Some of them contain one to four malignant images. That means It's very easy for the algorithm to predict zero or with high confidence zero benign and be right most of the times Right most of the batches the loss is not really meaningful right? So how do we solve this? So this is one uh, simple way to solve is if you have more malignant images you can add them to the data which is possible by looking at some of the old years data from 2019-18 and some of the available data in the public domain if you can pull it and probably there are some data sets available in the discussions and the competition you can use it to add more malignant images Let's assume uh, for this example that we don't have any external data and we are constrained to the data that is available, which is true in most of the real world cases, right? So we use something called samplers, okay? What is sampler? Let's look at it in the same top-down approach that we look at. Though we did not use samplers exclusively, PyTorch used it for us internally. When? When we say shuffle is equal to false, PyTorch ended up using something called sequential sampler. So what sequential sampler does is it gives index from zero to length of the data set. We will see how this sampler is also used. When shuffle is equal to true, so why do we pass these parameters? We pass it when we create these data loaders and when we create these data loaders in our get data function. So data loader is one of the key concepts of PyTorch which helps us to uh, batch a bunch of images and use multiple workers and all other advantages, right? This same uh, data loader, we have this key argument called shuffle, which can be set to true or false. If we set it to true, it ends up using a random sampler. And when it's set to false, it ends up using a sequential sampler. Let's understand what is the difference of a sequential sampler by just calling it, right? We'll create a sequential sampler and uh, get all the indexes that it returns it returns a bunch of indexes okay let's eyeball them how they look right when we look at the sequential sampler output okay this is a list comprehension which i believe most of you would be comfortable with we just look at the first 10 okay in data loader what it does is so we know that when we call a data loader data loader is gonna get a bunch of indexes from somewhere the somewhere is actually the sampler okay in for validation and test it will be sequential sampler what we do is we give it a number like say batch size of 64 then this 10 would become 64 and we'll get 64 indices okay in case of sequential just as the name describes it's going to start from 0 till the batch end the next time you call it it's going to give from 64 to 120 so it's going to give in terms of random sampler what it's going to do is 
it's going to give you a number between 0 and the maximum length of the data set, a different value, okay, and it doesn't repeat the same number again, okay. Those, these are the two samplers that we end up using by default. So, when the data loader gets a 64 indexes, it passes through the data set, it gets 64 images and 64 targets and batches it and gives it to our, to our model. That's what happens in our fit function, the one which we wrote in the previous sessions. So what we want really is, we don't want, so what is oversampling, right? Oversampling is the idea of showing the minority class, in this case malignant, more number of times than it occurs, right? Say for example, here, most of the times it occurs hardly like one or two percentage of the batch, right? Let's say we want it to appear 50% of every batch. So how do we do it? We add the same malignant images, we increase the number of malignant images in the data set. The simplest way to do that is, we know that we are pulling all this data from a pandas data frame. Uh, just copy all the rows which are malignant again and again and again, right, in number of times. That will change the uh, nature of the data set from unbalanced to balanced, kind of balanced, right. But that's... Uh, not the ideal way, right? Why? Because sometimes we want to uh, change the ratio. Sometimes we want to test with 10% of increase in malignance, 20%, 50%. And there are times when you are training, uh, you want to start with a very higher number of malignance. And when you end the training, you want to bring it to a level where it is pretty close to the natural distribution because you don't want to distribute the natural distribution. You want, don't want the algorithm to think, okay, the image is 50% malignant and 50% benign because that's how we showed the data, right? So there are different things you can do. So for that, we need a sampler which returns indexes which are 50% malignant and 50% benign if we want that to be 50%, right? Or 10%, then 10% malignant and 90% benign. And this 10% since there is no way we can have unique IDs, so we say uh, we can repeat the same numbers again and again. Okay, that's what we want the sampler to be. So in order to do that, let's write a sampler called Melonama sampler, okay, with subclasses sampler and which needs to have three important functions. Uh, first one is not generally uh, mandatory, but most of the times it's required, initialization. And the last one is length, just like how we had for data set. Okay, and iterator is what where the actual uh, work happens. What we are trying to do here is we are trying to find a set of indexes where the IDs are malignant and here not malignant benign. And then what we do is we create indexes of a particular length. Okay, and what is the length? It depends on the percentage that we end up passing it to. Let's say if we pass 0 0.5, that means we are saying we want 50% of the total length. Here n represents the total number of elements in your data set. Okay. So if you want 50%, we say give 50% of the numbers or let's say there are 100 elements in your data set. We are asking this np.random choice to give us 50 IDs from the malignant indexes. But how does it give when it doesn't have 50 by in, in according to our distribution it should be just 1.8 that should be hardly two images out of 100 right by specifying replace is equal to true that means it can uh, pick the same id again and again okay and then for benign we say uh, np.random choice benign indexes okay that's non-malignant and we say the remaining percentage let's say here 0 0.5 then it's 1 minus 0 0.5 which is again 0 0.5 right but sometimes you may want it to be 0 0.1, then we want it to be 0 0.990 percentage, okay? Sometimes there's a, because of this int, there's a small round off that happens, so I just added an integer one, okay? And we also just where replace is equal to true. Uh, when I wrote this, I thought it was really right. So now, but now when I'm explaining it to you, I'm wondering why it should not be false. Because uh, we have a more number of records for benign than malignant. So thus easily we can say replace is equal to false. So for exact for each epoch, you'll have always unique number of benigns, right? Probably this is a hyper parameter which you can tune and I strongly believe replace is equal to false should work much better than replace is equal to true. Then once we get these two indexes, we uh, make them as one numpy array. Okay, by using head stack. 
and we want to shuffle them because there's no shuffling happening in the data loader now right we don't want the algorithm to have the first 100 batches to be malignant and the next 100 batches to be non malignant so we uh, shuffle the indexes okay and then just take the n number of elements the total number of elements in the indexes and return that as an iterator okay that's what is happening here okay so some of the hyperparameters in this sampler itself that you want to tune what are hyperparameters the certain tweaks uh, that you can tune to either improve you try to improve your model's uh, performance right so you may not want it to be 50 percent all the times right sometimes in the starting when the model doesn't know anything about malignance you may want to start at 50 or even 70 percentage and then as the model keeps on training let's say you're training the model for 20 epochs you want to reduce it from let's say 0.5 to 0.1 or to even its original uh, distribution of 1.8 percentage that's so 0.18 right so you can tune uh, tune this so how do we use the sampler along with our data loader it's very simple by default i said uh, based on the shuffle parameter our sampler gets determined so we have to remove the shuffle because we are passing exclusively the sampler argument we can pass melonama sampler and melonama sampler it takes the data set and from data set the target it, it determines whether it's malignant or not it gets the indexes of malignant or not right so we pass the data set and we pass the malignant percentage. I'm just trying the random value, say 20 percentage. Yeah, okay. So now we have a data loader, okay, which has a different uh, malignant distribution than the normal data loader by default, which you had close to 1.8 percentage, right? That's what the natural distribution was. So let's see how this custom sampler has an impact. When you change the custom sampler, okay, I change the name of this. So let me change this here to make sure it's not. Uh, so let's do one thing. Let's just run this. Okay, it runs and let's just run this. Okay, if it's 0.2, that's 20 percentage, then you can see that in each batch of 64, you can see a different number of uh, things. And this 0.2 is not the batch indices it is the entire epoch indices in the entire epoch it's 50 percent is malignant and 50 percent is non-malignant in this case 20 and 80 20 is malignant and 80 percent is non-malignant okay and they can appear in any uh, fashion okay let's say uh, by changing this what happens 50 percent ish now keep a close uh, eye on the distribution here it would change see now you can see out of 64 uh, more or less it's always 50 percent ish is malignant right so you can uh, keep on changing these distributions to have a impact on your roc this is an idea that has worked in some of the previous experiments uh, previous kaggle competitions and some of the real world projects in my experience so you have to try this out to see if it improves okay and if it improves please uh, drop a comment in the comment section so valid data set you don't need to do anything valid set you have to say shuffle is equal to false we don't want to change the distribution we don't even shuffle in valid data set so let's try to quickly train if you have seen uh, previously in the kernel that i share with you guys we used a efficient b3 model but here just to show you things quickly i'm showing you a b0 and i'm training the one without our custom sampler we reach an roc of 88 okay and uh, here we are training you for 10 epochs again with with our custom sampler which we created uh, when i ran this it ran with a 0.2 uh, malignance and you see, you see see as you can see here even the third epoch it reaches 88.884 roc okay and then it starts slowly jumping here and there and it ends at 862 okay uh, i would see that as a sign of fluctuation or kind of overfitting you can play with the hyperparameters you can play with how much malignance you have you can play with the different learning rate and different weight okay you can play with different hyperparameters here okay uh, thanks guys for watching this video if you like this video please hit the like button if you have uh, any questions please comment on the comment section uh, thank you guys please hit the like button and subscribe bye bye